Oi oi, welcome back to Plumber Parts. You're here because you don't want to make one of the four mistakes that loads of people make when they're tightening up compression fittings on plumbing. The last mistake is one you don't want to miss. It might be the most important, it might be the least important, but you're going to have to watch all of the video now to find that out, aren't you? We've got that viewer retention up again, Max. Woohoo! Right, anyway, let's get on with mistake number one, or as they say in Spain, uno. Is it in Spain? They say that in Spain, don't they? So number one, the big problem that most people don't do when they're doing a compression fitting joint is they don't use jointing compound. Let's have a look. So we've got a joint here, a compression fitting joint that doesn't have jointing compound on it. Now when we take this apart, you need to learn very quickly how these fittings work. We've got a small taper here. And what we mean by a taper is it's that angled piece like that. And that taper meets the underside of our olive here. And then on the underside of our nut in here, we've got an exact same taper there inside this nut. And on the olive, that meets on there. So when we tighten these two up, the taper on here and the taper on here acts on those two ends of the olive to create a watertight seal. That's great. I mean, they do generally work quite well like that, but it would be a mistake to not allow this to have the best chance to tighten up and seal nicely by not using jointing compound. Usually what happens when you don't have enough jointing compound or any jointing compound whatsoever, they'll tend to squeak. And if they squeak, they're a lot more likely to leak. Here's one without jointing compound. Look, listen. Goes up like a mouse in a mouse trap, slowly being crushed to death. The other thing as well is that nowadays we tend to have cheaper fittings that are made abroad in the UK. So you need to give them every opportunity possible to get a watertight seal. Otherwise, the ceiling's coming down along with your marriage, if you're married. And if you aren't married, then well, good, good. <laughs> Lucky you. I love you, Emily. I do. If you are also an apprentice, it's the last thing you want to go up to your boss and say, sorry boss, but I've got a leak. And when he says, did you put jointing compound on it? And then you lie and say, yeah. And then he takes it apart and finds out you didn't. Then rightly, he should beat the hell out of you. Like it was the 1800s. Not like, oh, I've got feelings. No, sorry. This is a work site, proper stuff. I love to use a little bit of lube. So we've got some lube here. This is Jet Lube V2 Plus, multi-purpose jointing compound. Also make sure that it's okay for potable water. And if you're doing this on gas, which if you're a newbie, you shouldn't be, but make sure as well that it works on gas, all right? And you'll see there's a multiple few benefits to using this stuff. You paint it on like that. And like when I push this into the fitting, you'll see straight away why it's such a good idea. Look, look at it. And that will go as like a nice hardish type paste that if there, if you have slightly under tightened it, it will give you a nice good nip up. Now also, it's now on the shoulders of our olive, yeah? So when we tighten it up now, you'll find it goes up just smooth. That is exactly what you want, that smooth kind of, nice and firm kind of feeling, but not you having to really give it the big and give it the, to tighten it up, okay? So that leads me on to mistake number two. Over tightening the joint because you're a newbie and you cannot fix this leak. You've got a massive problem or it's not leaking and you've never done this before in your life and you think the tighter the better. Well, I'm afraid, amigos, that isn't really the case. So we keep tightening one of these up. You keep tightening it up and you keep tightening it up. And after a while, you'll see coming out of the back of our nut you'll see something happening that you don't want to see happening. Firstly, often what happens is it pulls the pipe out of level of the joint. You'll see that the olive is starting to appear at the back of the nut. It is more likely to leak if you do this. And you're effectively leading yourself down a path at which you won't be able to replace the olive, which is a tip I'm going to give you in a minute, or you will end up with no thread left and you'll have to cut the pipe and actually redo a bit of pipe work to get it to work properly. So don't over tighten the joint. If you've got a leaking fitting, your best option is to strip the fitting down and back, either do something to the olive, which I'm gonna tell you how to do at the end of the video, or use the method of some jointing compound, or use some PTFE tape, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. But that also does lead me to problem number three, under tightening. If you under tighten the joint, we're not gonna get the compression that I spoke about at the start of this video, and you're gonna end up with a leak. Or even worse, you could do what I've done in the past, because we all make mistakes, and I'd actually like you to know that, you know, you only really learn off your mistakes in life. If you did everything right, you wouldn't really learn much. 
There was a time when I was doing a whole house install. I'd been a plumber for 15 years by this point, and one of the fittings I put in, and I think my phone rang or whatever, and I didn't nip it up. Don't ask me how, but that stayed watertight for about 10 years. Maybe I just nipped it a bit, but I didn't tighten it, okay? It stayed watertight for 10 years until the customer went away on holiday and it decided to pop then. Probably because the pressure had built up because they hadn't been using their water pipes. Maybe something like that. So what I'm saying is, is just make sure that it's nice and tight and a great way to know that you've tightened them up accurately and properly is to get yourself a pen. Yes, there it is. And when you've tightened it up, just draw a T or something like that, or just make a little mark on it, make a little mark, and then you'll know that it's properly tightened up and then it's all good. And then when you go around at the end of your job, you can see the ones that aren't tight or you haven't made a mark on it, that's a prompt there for you to go in there with your tools that you can buy on our Amazon store, by the way, uh, and make sure that it's nice and tight. So, number four, and it's not the last one, we've got an extra one for you at the end of this, an extra tip. You've come to a leaking fitting, and you've watched a plumber parts video, yeah? You poor person. Where I said, what you wanna do is get PTFE tape and wrap it around the olive to make a watertight seal if you don't have any of this jointing compound. Now, I'm sure you've all seen PTFE tape before. It looks like this, and it goes absolutely everywhere, usually, because it's very, very thin, kind of nylon-y plastic substance. Now, the mistake that a lot of people make is they come to a fitting like this, a compression fitting like this, and they put their PTFE here, around the thread. As if the thread is actually the thing that is doing the sealing up. And also there, I've put the PTFE on the wrong way around, because it should go in the way that you do the nut up at. But there we go, it's another little mistake for you. You've watched earlier on how a compression fitting works. I told you, didn't I? If you're at the back and not listening, then it's your own fault now. I'm not gonna say it again, you've missed out. And you're not gonna pass your GCSE pipe. <laughs> GCSE pipe, can you imagine that was actually a, a thing? So look, we're gonna put that on there. Oh look, there's no ceiling happening, is there? Because of our PTFE. It's not even near it, is it? It's not even near the taper or the olive. It's not there. So mistake number four is people put PTFE on the thread and not the compression fitting olive. If you really want to fix this, you'd whip that out and hopefully you'd be able to move it so you can get it over here. And then you get your PTFE, roll it off the back like that, pop it on the pipe like that, and then we roll around like that. Just a few rolls, not much, you don't need loads. Give that a little run around with your finger, just to make sure it's nice and in. And then you can pop it, get rid of all this, because it does absolutely nothing. It's doing nothing, Captain. And you pop that in there. Now look, look at that now. That would make a watertight seal once you tighten this up, and once you've got all this off out of the way and nip that up. I wouldn't say it's a permanent fix, although I have seen these last for 20 plus years, but it would get you out of a bind if you couldn't get your plumber out in time, or you were just worried about a leak in your caravan or something like that. All right, because the sort of people who want to learn how to do this probably live in caravans. It's true, Max. This is the bonus tip. The only people who watch to the end of this video who haven't fallen asleep yet, unless of course you're making a cup of tea and this video is just running in the background anyway, thank you for getting my viewer attention up for me not actually doing anything. Say you have got a problem with the fitting, you've over tightened it or you've tightened it up and you need to get the olive off. There's a couple of ways you can do that. Why you might want to get the olive off is because you've got the fitting in the wrong place or the olive is just so badly damaged or the pipe's crushed or something like that. It's a nice little skill for you to know how to get this off. So you pull the pipe out of the way and hopefully you can maybe move it to here because it's clipped to the wall or you can move it back a bit or you're lucky like us and you can just do that. It's a lot easier, isn't it? This thing here is called a olive cutter. You can get this on our Amazon store. What you do, you pop it into the pipe like that and you get the blade up against the olive and you do do it up like this. And what this will do, it will pin the olive and cut it, but it won't really damage the pipe that much. So through there like that and then you just wind it off again. Look, the olive's moving already. And then you can wangle that off. For God's sake, right? Don't do what I did with my mate, Dave, right? This is a genuine story. He, uh, his mum and dad were divorced and he had his dad's wedding ring that looked exactly like an olive, right? And I was in a band at the time. He left it on the side when we were doing a band practice and I'm a plumber. I was like, what, what's that olive doing there? And I threw it in the garden. 
and it took us ages to find it, but we did find it in the end. So yeah, um, another tip, obviously don't you know mistake these for jewellery. Unless you're a cheapskate and you want to like, propose to your missus, and an olive's perfect. I mean, what's this worth? About 3p? Brasso it up, you're all good, aren't you? Uh, another way that we get olives off as well, as, as a little finishing tip, if you don't have one of these tools, firstly, you can go to our Amazon store where they're listed and you can buy one. I get a bit of commission. It doesn't cost you any more money, but it means that I can buy blow-up dolls and not have to worry about the money. Um, the other thing you can do is rather than using that, you can very, very lightly use a junior hacksaw or a hacksaw to cut a slit in the side of the olive, and then you pop a slotted screwdriver in it and just twist it and it will come off nice and easy all right so there you go you've got four tips there and you actually got an extra tip there for free so i should invoice you for that but there we go if you want to learn more about the mistakes that you shouldn't make in plumbing then you're going to want to watch this video here it's very important it's very beautiful it's very sexy and i think your mum's in it so you better watch it <laughs>